Hi, thanks very much. So I'd like to play just a quick game with you for a few seconds, just at the beginning, to get your minds thinking in the right way. So I'm going to show you a picture, and if you know what the picture's from, shout out the name of the game. So if we start here, does anyone know? Someone over here. Cityville, well done. Uh, okay. Cut the road. Yeah, well done. Okay, anyone got this one? Bejeweled, yeah, you guys are good. This one, must be some older kids. <laughs> yeah, Mario. Yeah, easy, easy. One last one. Clash of Clans. Oh, one, one more, sorry. Who's playing this? Yeah. Okay, so I'm here to talk to you about building games, multiplayer games, uh, using Phoenix and Phaser. Um, my name's Keith Ktech on Twitter. So if you want to, um, I've just published the URL of the GitHub repository that I'm going to be talking about through the talk. So if you want to find the link, you can download that and follow through. So I've called this lot the fun stack because it's actually good fun to play with, um, to build social games. So I'll just quickly, presumably you all know what Phoenix is. You're here at the Elixir conference. So what makes, uh, what makes Phoenix powerful is the fact that it sits on top of the shoulders of some giants. One of those, ah, sorry. So uh, Phoenix does come with really great documentation and uh, tutorials. So that really makes it easy and quick to get up and running with it. Um, and it's very fast. So uh, it sits on the shoulders of uh, Elixir. Um, and we're all here for Elixir, so we know what that is. And on top of that, we've got Erlang. So um, that gives Phoenix that power. Phaser has a similar kind of story. It uh, stands on the shoulders of some giants. It doesn't do all the work itself. And um, it comes with, uh, again, amazing uh, tutorials and um, uh, great documentation, which makes it uh, really easy and fun to get up and running. So it uses, it sits on top of the Pixie JavaScript rendering engine, which is super fast. Um, and then that sits on top of HTML5, which has been a long time in the coming, but it's, it's finally really here in the browser support and stuff. So, um, And what we're going to focus on a lot today is, is WebSockets. So I'll just quickly run through some of the fe features that make this really uh, what I wanted to play with. So obviously Phoenix um, is very fast and scalable. It comes with channels built in, and um, it comes ES6 ready. So you just install it, and it's ready. You can start writing ES6, which is uh, a lot nicer than writing ES5. Obviously, uh, on top of that, we've got Elixir. We've got the metaprogramming. We've got the toolings around Elixir, which make the whole journey really fun. And then on top of that, we're, we're deploying to the Erlang VM, which makes the system uh, straight away scalable. So, um, just to quickly show you about Pixie. So, Pixie is super fast. And I'll give you a quick demo here. Hopefully here. So, here's a couple of bunnies. This is, a, this is running in the browser here. Um, here's a couple of bunnies running around. Here's a few more. <laughs> and a few more. And a few more. And we're still running at uh, like 60 frames a second. You can't really see it there, but um, there's a lot of bunnies there. <laughs> and we can just keep going. <laughs> So I didn't write that, so there's no, no need to applause me. Um, it also comes with uh, Sprite Sheet support. So Sprite Sheet enables you to this quick demo. I don't know whether it's going to load. If not, well, that's going to be really slow. So Sprite Sheet enables you to um, have a bunch of graphics, and then it will wrap that. It might load. Everyone's used. Everyone, stop using the internet for a second. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going to take too long. Oh, oh, we're nearly there. Oh, don't worry about it. I'll show you some cool stuff anyway. <laughs> um, so, moving on. So, Phaser sits on top of that, and Phaser gives you a bunch of uh, game kind of stuff that you want. Um, it gives you preloading, so you can preload a, a bunch of assets, and it will manage that for you. It gives you multiple physics engines. Oh, we'll see whether any of these are going to load. Blank screen. <laughs> Not looking good. So these are the, all of the um, all of the uh, examples on Phaser 
Uh, it gives you the code down here, and then the example is just running up there, so it makes it really easy. So here I can run my little character around, and uh, this is using Ninja Physics, which is a cool name in itself. <laughs> um, uh, it will support tile maps, scale managing. It's, it's aimed at uh, delivering to mobile platform as well. So uh, if you want to build a game that's going to work on, on iPads with multi-touch and stuff like that, uh, it's quite a big challenge, but it's, it's designed for that. So um, I'm just going to show you some pointless social stats just for a bit of fun. So um, if you look at GitHub on their showcases page, Phaser comes out as the number one JavaScript gaming engine. If we look at Richard Davey, who created it, he's got uh, nearly 16,000 followers. If we compare that to Jose, <laughs> he's got 25,000 followers. But as we all know, Jose's not on Twitter anymore, so that doesn't count. <laughs> so if we look at GitHub instead, uh, phaser has got like 20, 12,000 stars. Um, if we look at Elixir, it's doing very well for a small, uh, you know, a new project. Um, we're already up to 7,000, but if we add to that the Phoenix project of uh, another 6,000, and if we add OTP as well, <laughs> we're actually doing really well. And if you compare that to HTML5 spec, <laughs> we really haven't got a lot going on. Anyway, so, uh, so I'm going to show you some code, so be warned. <laughs> I'm using a JavaScript uh, OO library, so I can't really do this talk without showing you a bit of JavaScript. If you really hate JavaScript, which a lot of people do, just look away. <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're going to build a Hello World, just simple starting Hello World. We'll create a Phoenix project, we'll install Phaser, we'll create a game, we'll update the HTML to put the game in the page, we'll start the server, we'll create a state to put the game in, uh, to put the Hello World text in, We'll add the text and then we'll make it draggable. Sound good? Okay, so if anyone's used, who's used Phoenix? Hands up. Yes, loads of people. Okay, so we just create a new Phoenix project, new demo. Um, we'll install Phaser. So to install Phaser, we'll download the JavaScript library and put it in the vendor folder. So we'll put it in there so that Brunch doesn't try to uh, compile ES6. So then we need to create a game class which is going to uh, contain our, our game. It's got a, a width and a height and a container which is the HTML container. We, in the app.js file, we're going to import our game class. We're going to instantiate it and create a new one with a width and a height and then the ID which is the element ID. And then we'll go into uh, the templates that Phaser, uh, Phoenix provides you. Um, and update the index page, get rid of everything that's there, and just put in a single div tag with an ID of phaser. Then we start up the server, and bang, we've got a blank page. <laughs> uh, but wait, it's okay. If you open up the console, you'll see that phaser is actually running, and it will tell you a little bit about the capabilities of your browser that it's managed to detect. So it will show you you're running phaser, it will also show you what version, it will show you what version of Pixie, and also, um, if you have web audio or any other f uh, features, um, HTML5 features, it will show you that. So where's the hello world? Obviously, that's what we promised. OK, so before we jump into that, we'll just break, uh, step back and, and look at how Phaser works in terms of building a game. It breaks it up into states, so it's like a state machine. So it enables you to have like a loading state, a menu state, um, a level one state, for example, and it just enables you to compartmentalize your code. So we're going to create a directory for that, and then we're just going to create a lobby state. That's going to be where we're going to render our hello world text. So we'll create a label, and I like to use um, modules, external modules. I've fought really hard to make JavaScript declarative as much as possible. It's been a real struggle to learn about that, um, but I'll talk to you more about that later. The, so we'll create a label, and then setting the anchor just puts the registration point in the middle, so we can move it, we can, uh, move it around. So that's our lobby state. This is uh, the create label function, which is basically just going to uh, create the text in the center. You'll see we're extracting the center x and y. Um, so here in our game, we need to import the lobby state. We need to add it to the game, and then we'll start it. So straight away, bang, there we go, hello world, that was easy. But wait, we can do a bit better than that. 
Let's make it draggable. So to make it draggable, we literally add input enabled on the, on the label and enable drag on the input. Oh. And there we go. Boom, boom. <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> We've got a while to go yet. <laughs> Okay, so what about, what can we do next? Well, the reason we're here is to plug Phoenix together with Phaser. So let's make it synchronized text. So this is where we get into Phoenix channels. This is where the fun really starts. So Phoenix builds its uh, channels on top of uh, HTML, HTML5 WebSocket and they're multiplex, so you can have multiple channels. Um, they come built in, ready to go, really easy. Chris has done an amazing job making it easy for us. Um, and they're asynchronous, so you can send communications back and forth in the same direction. So if we use the generators that Phoenix gives us, we'll create a new lobby channel. Um, and then Phoenix will suggest that we should add that to our WebSocket. So this is the code that Phoenix will create for us. And the things I want to point out, that arrow should be a little bit higher, <laughs> um, is the topic. So it's called Games Lobby. Um, if we authorise OK, it will return us an OK. And then finally, just to keep in your minds, um, we've got a handler called Shout, which we're going to use. And all that does is to broadcast whatever comes in to everyone. So in the user socket, we're going to add our channel, as, as uh, Phoenix told us to do. And then in our app.js, we're going to import the socket from Phoenix, which is the socket class that uh, Phoenix provides us. We're going to create an instance of it, and then we'll assign our game to an instance, and then call game.start and pass it the socket. So now, the game, we need to uh, update it so that it can accept that socket, and the first thing we're going to do is connect the socket. So as soon as the game loads and starts, it's going to connect the socket. We actually want to do a little bit more than that. We want to create a channel. So we'll use the socket to create a new channel called Games Lobby. Um, we'll import another helper function called Join Channel. Join Channel is going to give it the, the channel, and then if we successfully join, we can start the state. So we won't actually go into the game state until the channel is connected. Uh, and then finally, we're going to pass the channel into the state so that it's got access to that state. So, uh, to, sorry, to the channel so that it's got access to the channel so it can communicate. So first off, we're just going to, uh, in our lobby state, we're just going to log out the channel just to make sure that we've got it. And then my join channel helper function here is literally just providing me with some, um, some default, uh, which will log out cons um, log out. Um, errors and stuff like that. So here you'll see we're all up and running, we've got the state loaded and we've actually got the channel connected down here. So we know that we've, we're in the state and we've got the channel there. So now we can talk to the server. This is great. So we're nearly there. What we want to do now is when we drag the text and drop it, let go, we want to send that message somewhere. Or we want to send a message somewhere. So first off, instead of logging uh, the channel, we're actually going to store it in the class. And then we're going to make the uh, label that we created, we're going to make it um, a syncable label. So we'll create a helper function and pass it the channel there. And inside this sync label, we're going to create the label as we did before with the enable drag. And we're going to call another function, which is going to enable us to sync the position. And we'll pass it the event that we want, which is on drag stop. So phaser gives us a lot of events which we can use. So in the sync position, we're just going to add the event, which is the on drag stop. Um, we're going to call a function called send position. And right in send position, we're just going to log out a serialized version of the sprite. So we don't want to send the whole sprite. We just want to send the x and y. So inside our serialized position, we're just plucking out the X and Y and creating an object that just contains the X and Y. So here we go. So you'll see here, we're now logging out the X and Y. So it's obviously not getting sent across because I'm not actually sending anything. So we're ready to send. So rather than just logging that message, let's assign it to a variable. We can then still log it out, but we can now push it up the channel. And we're going to use the shout um, handler that, that I mentioned earlier on. So here we go. And you see nothing happened. 
So what that means is we haven't received the message. So we've sent it, but nobody's listening. <laughs> so to receive the message, in our sync position, we're going to add another function, receive position. And here we'll use the um, uh, Phoenix uh, channel helper to, when we receive a message on shout, when we receive a, a shout message, we'll just log it out. So we'll try that again here. Now you see that we're receiving. But interestingly, we're receiving it on both sides. So what that means is that in here, if you remember this, we're using the shout function, and it's using broadcast. So the broadcast will send it to everyone, and that includes you, because you're, you're in the room as well. Um, we've got another function called broadcast from, which will send it to everyone else, which is a nice, uh, really nice, useful thing. So what we'll do is we'll create our own handle this time, call it position, and we'll use broadcast from rather than broadcast. <coughs> Excuse me. So now we need to update our synchronization stuff so that we're pushing, rather than pushing shout and channel on receive shout, we'll push position. Uh, and then we'll... So here you'll see, oh, it's jumping back to the thing and we, we keep joining the channel. What happens there, that I've done this quite a few times, so this is why I've left it in here, is um, what's actually happened is that the, the server is crashing and it's because we've updated the code but it hasn't reloaded. So if you just restart the server, you'll see that we're sending the message. There we go. So we've sent and received. So now it's just a case of updating our code so that rather than just logging out the message, we pluck out the X and Y coordinates and set the sprite position to X and Y. So here we go. Boom. This is good, isn't it? Okay. But wait, we can do better than that. Let's, um, let's change it to the on-drag event. That's a bit more fun. So, oh, sorry. So here we just change the drag stop to drag update. And there we go, a bit more fun. Okay, we're starting to get a bit more interactive. And here you can see it's sending bucket loads of messages backwards and forwards. So let's just add some juice to that. So here's this, it's just me playing around with some ideas. And here you can see I've got on rolled over and multiple things and they're all synchronized when we get in. So the performance, as soon as I plugged this together, I was like, wow, this actually works really well. It's really nice. Um, okay. So uh, there's a problem with what we've just designed here. So I call it the client side state problem. So if you see here on the right hand side, we've logged in and we've moved the hello world. And we just logged in as another client on the, on the left hand side, but he didn't get the update until, the, until, until somebody moved it again and we actually synchronized the, synchronized the position of the hello world. So what's actually happening is that the state is being stored inside the client and not on the server. So when you log in, you don't know what the state is until somebody updates it. So being good Elixirists, we know that we can use a gen server to store state on the server. But this is Erlang and OTP, so we could probably do better and use a supervision trees. I have created a Phoenix Phaser demo, which is up on GitHub, and you can go and check it out. And I don't have enough time to run through building up to supervision trees and stuff, but this is all here. So where we got to was synchronized text, um, and I've created branches which walk you through building up to having super supervision trees working. So um, first step is creating an identifier for each user. So I've created uh, um, a branch that will, will identify and, and create a token for each user. And then we want to enable multiple channels so that when we're in the lobby, we have one channel. When we're in the game, we have another channel. So then you don't get messages for the game when you're only sitting in the lobby. Um, and then we want to use dynamic uh, pro processes and, and supervision trees so we can support more characters on the screen. So this is the, the next level up. And then finally, what? I ended up building, just as I was preparing for this talk, was a little version of rock, paper, scissors, which looks something like this. So we're in the lobby now, and how, here this guy has moved into the game, so he's now connected to the game channel. 
Now they're both in the game channel. And so the triangle beats the um, circle. So here we've got physics, and uh, each character is sending his position to the server. Um, each character uh, is actually a process. So when you log in, it creates a new process, and then that, when you move around, you're sending messages which get updated uh, in the process um, where your position is. So any other users will see your position. So that's available on uh, GitHub, KTech, Phoenix Phaser demo. So if you, if you want to play with it, play with it, go for it, get you know, cracking with it, and um, give me feedback if you uh, find anything difficult or whatever. So we've still got a bit of a problem here. Um, and I, I kind of call it the message flow problem. So here I've got one, I've got a server, this node here is a server, and then I've got one client connected. So when the client sends a message to the server, if you imagine we're not using broadcast from, we're just using broadcast for this example. When I send a message, it will send a message back. If I have two clients connected, when, when they each send a message to the server, the server's going to send out two messages now. If I've got three, it's going to send out three messages. If I've got five, it's going to send out five messages. Can you see what's going to happen here? And I kept going with this because it was quite fun. So, here. <laughs> So that is 100, but wait, I didn't stop there. And this is uh, 500. So here, this really highlights exactly what's going to happen, which is this green stuff is the, is the flood of the network. So with 500 connected clients, that's it, bang, we've, we've flooded the network. So that is a problem there. So even Elixir and Erlang, uh, and Erlang is, not, is not fast enough to cope with that, so we need to change our architecture. So, and obviously using broadcast from is just going to remove one of those messages. So I have, a, I have some ideas about this, but it's still sort of research at the moment, which is to basically make the um, server pulse. So, that, so it will collect data coming in from the clients, and that will update its state, and then, and then based on a specific frame rate, it will broadcast a single message to the, to the clients with... Uh, all of the state that it knows about. So I haven't, haven't really developed this yet, but that's what I'm thinking about. So I've got a few demos to show you that I've been messing, I've been messing around with this for like six or seven months now. Um, so the first one, and if you've got laptops, feel free to um, grab your laptop and go to rocks.globalkeith.com. I don't know how stable this one is because I built it last night. <laughs> so this is the uh, rock, paper, scissors game. So here you can see people are on there already. And if I click here, will it even let me in? OK. So you can see it's struggling to cope with the message load. Uh, if we can eat that guy. Yeah. So anyway, that's that one. That's, that's really uh, to play with. But I'll keep, upgrade, I'll keep updating that. The next one is... Let me just click. Uh, if you go to dots.globalkeys.com, this is uh, another one that I built. And hopefully it will load. I didn't realise the, the Wi-Fi would be so slow. Has anyone got it loaded up? <laughs> Here we go. Right. So, um, it's going to load. So this, um, basically, as I was building, I, I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't really know phaser, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm not... Uh, like an expert with Elixir. I didn't even know Elixir like a year ago. So, um, so this should hopefully load a character. Here we go. So this is me. I'm the little floating character. Each one of those guys is a process running on the server. And then somewhere around here is some little Elixir drops. And those are, those are all processes as well. 
And if I go over and pick that up, it should. <laughs> so the collision detection isn't working somewhere. I haven't tried it with quite as many people, but yeah, it's not working. Yeah, I think it's just not running properly. But um, yeah, that's, that's up there anyway. And then the final one, which... Uh, see if I can load it. Yeah, we need better Wi-Fi here, whoever's organising that. There we go. So I'll load it before anyone else. Right, so this one's called snake.globalkeys.com. Um, Talk amongst yourselves for a second. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, they're not working. No. Well, this should be multiplayer snake, but uh, feel free to try it in your own time. I, I won't. Um, persevere with this because it's clearly not working very well. Uh, but you can try it in your own time. So anyway, uh, let me just talk about what I'd like to do in the future. So um, this has been kind of an ongoing experiment that I started back in uh, September last year. Um, and then I just I keep uncovering things and then realising that the mountain goes higher and there's more things to learn and more stuff and whatever. So it's, a, it's an ongoing journey. One of the things that I've done recently, Brian Joseph um, has been writing a, pr uh, a project called Elixir Script. Um, and we got together and did a bit of pairing and basically knocked up a little demo using Elixir Script to, so rather than writing uh, the JavaScript in JavaScript, I used, we used Elixir Script. Um, and he's done a lot of work um, implementing things like agents and uh, the, the full Elixir stack. He's really you know, done some amazing stuff. So we kind of played around with that. I haven't spent a lot of time. That was literally only a week ago. Um, but we got a hello world, which is great. We're really pleased about that. So um, when I get some time, I, I want to focus on that. One of the other things that I've spent a lot of time learning this year is how to write declarative JavaScript rather than imperative, so rather than having state inside all your objects and using classes. Um, there's a lot of really amazing work being done to make JavaScript functional. And if you can bring those ideas in, that's really what I, what I want to be able to do is, is use those ideas. So two of those is Ramda.js and Kefir. And then there's also Elm, which I know a few people have been looking into. I've no idea. I mean, that's another thing I have to go and learn to be able to work out how it all fits together. And then um, something else I have in mind is to, uh, once I've formalised these ideas um, about what makes sense and what's useful, is to create a hex package with some generators to be able to get you up and running really quickly. Um, and then obviously Phoenix Presence is the new thing. So um, I've done a little demo, but it didn't work very well at the moment because I'm still trying to understand Presence and then work out how that fits into, into this. But one of the ideas is to create um, a high scoreboard using presence. So, um, and then on top of that, there's loads of stuff to do with gamification. So uh, those games that I showed you at the beginning, they're flooded with uh, using gamification techniques, um, using challenges and virtual goods and leaderboards, power energy, all stuff like this. So I really haven't focused on any of that because I've been trying to get the fundamentals to, to plug together. And then obviously things like uh, authentication, signing up using Twitter, and then suddenly you can play with all your you know, Twitter, uh, Facebook friends or whatever. Um, and then as soon as I started this project, uh, Richard uh, decided he's going to upgrade Phaser and call it Laser. <laughs> so um, I mean, that's still a long time in the, in the future. He's done a lot of work with it. But um, so who knows, who knows? And then there's lots of other. JavaScript libraries that kind of give you, you know, this kind of thing. So, so I started, I was telling Leonard here, I started writing a book back as I was doing this. And as the journey's gone on, I've come a long way from where I started writing the book. So a lot of the research that I've done over the last couple of months, I need to go back and re-upgrade the book 
um, and get that to a shape. But um, it's in the works and it will come at some point. I'm quite slow at writing books. So anyway, that's me. Thanks very much for watching. Okay. Because it was it worked a lot about how to synchronize, you know, fast FPS game, and it was all about um, ticks and how many times seconds. Yes. And I think it's really it it, it seems we will have to 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 this type of project. That's great. That's really good. It's it's something that I've been learning about, like I didn't, when I started this, I didn't anticipate needing to learn all these different things, but as you kind of find a problem, you need to go and find out how other people have solved it. And so yes, definitely, that's something. Thank you for the suggestion. Anyone else? Uh, are you doing all this in your spare time? Yeah. So I took... Um, so a little bit of background on that. When I went to Austin, Texas for the Elixir Conf, I stood up and said, right, I want to be doing Elixir full time. Um, I, I pledged that I will be doing Elixir full time by Berlin, um, which didn't happen, but I am 100% remote now. So um, in between jobs, I said I'm only going to work 100% remote. Um, and in between those two jobs, I was able to do a lot of progress with this. Um, and I'm now working, I've, at my new job I've agreed only four days a week, so I've, got a five, so I've got an extra day to work on my own stuff, which is great. So I've um, constrained, because there's so many things to learn, um, I've constrained my view of the world down to this right now, um, just because I'm trying to get that. It's a bit like uh, they were saying with Credo. I'm just trying to get this up and running to a state that I'm happy with, and then I can look at you know, outside of, outside of that ecosystem, because if you, if you lose, if your bro focus is too broad, you can't really achieve. So that's what I'm trying to do at the moment. Possibly. Um, uh, that's, yeah, it's something I haven't even considered. So um, I've, I've been a long fan of Jabba, so um, yes, I'll, uh, we'll chat afterwards and I'll, um, I'll see if I can add that to my list of things to look at. Catch you later. <laughs> Thanks. Okay then, ladies and gentlemen, Keith Salford. Thank you.